from foreign entities has severely limited the committee's access to highly material and relevant information. Further, in working with Donald Trump's attorneys to halt the production of documents only months after it started, Chairman Comer buried further evidence of former President Trump's misconduct by depriving the committee's Democratic staff of the ability to work with Mazars to conduct further searches for responsive records, including any documents relating to Russia, South Korea, South Africa, and Brazil. In June 2023, the committee, under Chairman Comer's direction, and the parties to the litigation filed a joint motion for dismissal and termination of the case. The district court granted the motion on July 5, 2023, ending the litigation and the court's supervision of the parties' agreement. In the face of mounting evidence that foreign governments sought to influence the Trump administration by playing to President Trump's financial interests, Chairman Comer and President Trump's representatives appear to have acted in coordination to bury evidence of his misconduct. Report Methodology and Document Limitations Before Chairman Comer relieved Mazars of its obligation to produce relevant documents, the committee received documents from Mazars showing substantial payments by foreign governments and entities to three Trump properties. The Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C., the Trump International Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the Trump World Tower at 845 United Nations Plaza in New York, New York. In addition, publicly available information shows significant spending by a state-owned Chinese bank at a fourth Trump property, Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue in New York, New York. However, Mazars did not produce any ledgers to the committee for this property. As noted, The documents that were produced by Mazars were only a subset of the financial records the committee subpoenaed from the company. Even this very limited set of documents, however, provides ample evidence that President Trump received millions of dollars from foreign governments and entities while he occupied the Oval Office, in blatant violation of the Foreign Emoluments Clause of the Constitution. Report Methodology This report is based on an analysis of emoluments from foreign governments and foreign entities identified in records provided by Mazars, as well as public information. This report includes foreign spending at Trump properties that has been reported in media only if such spending could be confirmed through Mazars records produced to the committee, or, as in the case of ICBC's expenditures at Trump Tower in New York, through publicly available information. This report focuses only on payments that constitute emoluments within the meaning of the Foreign Emoluments Clause of the Constitution. It therefore includes charges incurred by foreign government departments, agencies, embassies, and royal family members, as well as their officials and employees, all of which are components of a foreign state consistent with the history and text of the Foreign Emoluments Clause, as well as opinions from the DOJ's OLC, which provides legal advice to the president and executive branch agencies. This also includes payments by corporate entities that were owned by a foreign government. At every step, this report has taken a very conservative approach to tallying foreign spending reported in the Mazars records and public information. For example, in several cases, such as the stay at the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C., by the Embassy of the People's Republic of China, the Mazars records show an advance deposit or partial payment to a Trump property but do not show the total amount ultimately paid for the event or stay. In these instances, the report reflects only the advance deposit or partial payment, even though these are almost certainly a portion of the total payment for an event or stay. Further, out of an abundance of caution, This report does not include as foreign emolument spending expenditures by Chinese corporate entities whose ownership structures were opaque during the time frame under consideration and that therefore cannot be definitively identified as state-owned or state-controlled. The report excludes these entities' payments from the emolument totals it presents despite indications that these entities were closely aligned with the government of the People's Republic of China or appeared to have become state-owned. 
This report also excludes from total emolument spending more than $283,000 paid to the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. for the Sheikh Altani family extended stay, an apparent reference to members of the Qatari royal family. In a letter to then-Chairwoman Maloney in 2022, the Qatari ambassador asserted that no representative of the Embassy of Qatar and no other government official of the state of Qatar was a guest at the Trump International Hotel at the time. Although the ambassador's assertion did not explain whether the stay involved members of the Qatari royal family, in keeping with the report's conservative approach, the expenditures related to this stay were not counted as foreign emoluments. With respect to Trump World Tower, Ma- Mazars produced records only for the year 2018. Accordingly, the report identifies the monthly common charges paid by foreign governments and entities for units in Trump World Tower for the year 2018, as noted in the Mazars records. In addition, where public records confirm that a foreign government owned a property at Trump World Tower throughout the Trump presidency and therefore incurred monthly common charges throughout this period, this report also includes an estimated total for the entire Trump presidency using the 28 figures provided by Mazars. For example, Saudi Arabia owned the 45th floor of Trump World Tower throughout the Trump presidency. Mazars' records show that in 2018, it paid a monthly base charge of $11,189 for this property, totaling $134,270 for the whole of 2018. This report includes the $134,270 figure based on the Mazars' records, as well as an estimated total emolument of $537,080, four times the 2018 total, to account for the four years of the Trump presidency. Given that these common charges likely increased after 2018, the projections included in this report likely understate the emoluments received by Donald Trump's businesses from the foreign governments that had properties in Trump World Tower. In addition, the properties in the Trump World Tower incurred special assessment, electric charges, and in some cases, fees arising from late payments. These assessments, charges, and fees are noted within the relevant sections, but are not included in the totals shown for the Trump World Tower properties. Finally, in certain instances, the report discusses charges incurred by actors such as lobbyists who who, though not themselves components of foreign governments, were nonetheless acting in the interests of foreign governments. Although these payments do not constitute emoluments, they are not in tallies of emolument payments in this report. They are noted because they raise similar concerns regarding conflicts between former President Trump's personal, financial, and business interests and his duty to conduct foreign policy solely in the interests of the United States. This is Face Palm America. I'm Beowulf Rocklin. We'll return in a moment to continue the reading of White House for Sale. Face Palm America. I'm Beowulf Rocklin. Let's continue reading the report White House for Sale. Face Palm America, I'm Beowulf Rockland. Let's continue with the reading of White House for Sale. Extent and Limitations of Mazars Documents The Mazars documents summarized in this report provide only a modest window into the web of over 500 active business entities, foreign government expenditures, and resulting conflicts of interest and constitutional violations that pervaded the Trump presidency. The report is unable to provide a complete accounting of all foreign government emoluments former President Trump's businesses received, even during the time period covered by the committee's subpoena, because 1. Chairman Comer, in coordination with Donald Trump's attorneys, blocked the production of documents as soon as he became chairman in 2023, as discussed above, and 2. Former President Trump 
and his entities failed to provide Mazars or Mazars failed to retain many key documents. The set of documents that Mazars produced before Chairman Comer shut down the production also contained highly troubling omissions. For example, the committee's Democratic staff specifically requested that Mazars provide records related to a $20 million loan from Daewoo, a South Korean entity, that was not reported on former President Trump's 2015, 2016, or 2017 public financial disclosures. Spreadsheets prepared by Jeffrey McConney, the Trump Organization's former controller, reflect that former President Trump's loans payable include a loan for $19,760,000 owed to L.P. Daiwu as of June 30, 2015. This loan remained outstanding until Daiwu was bought out of its position on July 5, 2017. Critically, as Forbes reported, although the debt appeared on the Trump Organization's internal paperwork, it did not show up on Trump's public financial disclosure reports, documents he was required to submit to federal officials while running for president and after taking office. Yet Mazars informed the committee's Democratic staff it had no records to produce regarding the Daiwu loan. The committee's Democratic staff also requested hotel guest ledgers for the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C., covering the 2017 presidential inauguration documents regarding Chinese megabank ICBC's nearly $2 million a year lease in Trump Tower. Once again, Mazars represented it had no documents responsive to either of these requests. Mazars also did not provide any ledgers before the subpoena was terminated for properties which reportedly received a large number of foreign government visitors, including Trump Turnberry Hotel and Resort in Scotland, Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago, Illinois, Trump International Hotel in New York, New York. Mazars also indicated it had no specific counting of foreign government spending at Trump-owned properties. This is stunning in light of former President Trump's pledge that Trump hotel properties would donate all profits from foreign government payments to the U.S. Treasury, and the policy announced by the Trump Organization purportedly intended to effectuate that pledge. The records provided by GSA also show the significant omissions in Mazar's records regarding foreign government spending at Trump-owned properties, particularly the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. Last Congress, Based on records provided by GSA, former committee chairwoman Maloney estimated that total foreign government payments to just the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. from 2017 through 2019 would have been $3,787,485. This estimate was based on the hotel's representations that for these three years, it had identified $355,687 in foreign government profits, which it had remitted to DJT Holdings LLC, another Trump-owned entity, which DJT Holdings LLC had remitted to the Trump Corporation, and which the Trump Corporation, in turn, had donated to the U.S. Treasury on behalf of the Trump Organization. However, only a fraction of this foreign government spending at Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. is reflected in the documents provided by Mazars and discussed in this report. Ultimately, this report is based on records the committee was able to obtain from Mazars before Chairman Comer released the former president's accounting firm of its obligations and on public information. Although these records clearly establish that former President Trump received millions of dollars from foreign governments and entities in violation of the Constitution's Foreign Emoluments Clause, they are incomplete. Specifically, the records provided by Mazars include the following items for three of the former president's properties. At the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C., the Hotel Ledger which details customers' advance deposits and account balances, among other information, from between November and December 2016, August 2017, and December of 2017. At the Trump International Hotel Las Vegas, Nevada, guest ledger detail dated December 31st, 2017, and covering bookings inclusive of that date. This ledger also includes several bookings that do not include the date of December 31st, 2017, but that include dates close in time. Deposit ledger, 
dated December 31st, 2017, and include bookings for